Good day, everyone. My name is Dean O'Neill. I'm the producer at Asbury United Methodist Church in Columbus, Indiana, and I'm joined by Nick Robinson, the pastor at Asbury United Methodist Church in Columbus, Indiana. And we are trying something new for our membership and for anybody that comes and joins our church. We are going to start producing a podcast, and we're not really sure where the podcast is going right now, Nick, but uh, uh, right now we're wanting to preview our Lent sermon series and use this as a topic. That's right. Uh, Lent is a really special time, and we're trying to figure out ways we can get our message out, God's message out, in ways that people can listen to it throughout the week and be reminded or be excited about what's coming up next. And so Lent is this next major season in the life of the church. And there's a lot going on, I mean, in Lent right before Easter. Uh, and, and there's a lot of things that happen that not a lot of people know about. Uh, Good Friday, Holy Thursday. Can we expand on that before we get into our preview and our title of our series? Yeah, well, the Lent starts with Ash Wednesday. And so if you're familiar with the Mardi Gras tradition or the Fat Tuesday tradition where people kind of party it up and they use the idea is to use up all of the good food that you're not going to eat during Lent because you're fasting. Ash Wednesday is the day that we get together and uh, we confront our mortality and we talk about fasting and self-denial and prepare ourselves for the weeks of Lent ahead. Lent concludes with this series of Holy Week leading up to Easter. Uh, one of the f- days that we celebrate during the week is called uh, Holy Thursday. In some traditions, they call it Maundy Thursday from the word mandatum, where Jesus gave the disciples a new rule to follow. You may have heard, uh, you know, treat others as you want to be treated. Jesus says it things like, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And then on Holy Thursday, he says, um, love others as I have loved you. And so he really intensifies this idea of love, and he washes their feet as this act of service. And then the next day is Good Friday, uh, this really dark day where we watch the events leading up to Jesus's crucifixion and see his crucifixion take place kind of metaphorically more than visually and prepare ourselves for the good news that's going to come on Easter in a few days. One of the things I like to hear is how you choose the titles of your series. I think that's, I think that's one of your strengths, man. So tell us what your your title is for the Lent service. Oh, so our, our Lenten series is going to be called Between Dinner and and death. It has this very serious overtone, and it, al- it almost makes me think, well, did I eat something poisonous at dinner, and now I'm going to die? But it's it's not our dinner and death. It's between the Last Supper and Jesus' crucifixion. Right, right. And there, there's you're going to get into things that possibly we don't know about, or things that happen that we need to be reminded of. Yeah, well, he's, he's uh, arrested in the middle of the night, and then he uh, at noon, the land is darkened, and he dies shortly after that. And so it kind of happens and transpires quickly in that morning. Yeah, and so if you if you go through a normal Lenten season and you don't do a series like this, then you don't really talk about Jesus' death and crucifixion until Thursday and Friday, right before Easter. And people come to those services, but not everyone comes to those services. And so you miss kind of the, the drama of the unfolding of the end of Jesus's life before his crucifixion. And so we're going to slow it down and there's a few scenes that take place and we're going to follow Jesus through those scenes. So, and people, humans play a really big role in each of these scenes. So we're going to examine the role of the humans and maybe put ourselves in their shoes. We're going to examine Jesus's response to each of these events as they happen and maybe try to put ourselves in his shoes, maybe just use a little holy imagination to think think about what he might be feeling or experiencing. And then um, we'll be prepared for uh, Holy Thursday and Good Friday to kind of be even more reflective. It's quite a, uh, it's quite a change in, in subject matter, obviously from uh, just getting done with Christmas and then now going into Lent, the Lent season and 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 Easter, tell me how you uh, put the brakes on one and start up on the other. What what what's the best way that you can explain how you are trying to get the word out that you want? Yeah, so you know, Christmas. By the time the church really starts Christmas, the world is done with Christmas because on the church calendar, like the the universal church calendar, Christmas doesn't actually even start until Christmas Day. 
and ever, the world has moved on past Christmas because they were celebrating in October. Sure. And so we try to slow people down a little bit and keep Christmas there and then try to hit something at the beginning of the year that's relatable to, to being people, either goal setting because so many people are doing that or uh, refreshing our lives, things like that. We, this year we talked about being human because we're all human and let's take an honest look at that. And then in Lent, it's, it's this more reflective season. And so to slow down and be reflective either on the life of Jesus or our, on our own spiritual walks are like the themes that come up most often there. They tend to be more discipleship series, meteor scripture series, uh, practicing our faith series that fall into this that window. Getting back to the uh, Lent series, explain to everyone that doesn't know giving up something for Lent. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's talk about that for a second. So there's, there's, it's called fasting. Uh, it doesn't mean to go quick. It, it means to kind of deny yourself something. And it has a long tradition in Scripture. Like There's fasting everywhere in Scripture. Uh, I, I'm reading a book right now called The Celebration of Discipline. And the, the Bible doesn't have a lot of directions on exactly how to fast. And the author's name is uh, Richard Foster. And he says the directions aren't there because back then everyone just knew how to do it because it was that commonly pra practiced by, by people, by uh, Jewish people, but by kind of all people in their lives. And so during Lent, uh, commonly now people will give up something. Uh, chocolate is something people give up a lot because it's something people enjoy. It's something that may not be the best thing for you. And so people try to choose something that they like that they will miss during the season. So like if, if I gave up doing my taxes during Lent, that probably misses the point. Uh, yeah, and, yeah. And, and, and you get charged with all kinds of late fees. Uh, yeah, that, that's happened before <laughs> to me. Um, and so during, during Lent, you can give something up. I've given up caffeine before, all caffeine. Right. And it really helped me understand, uh, one, the effects that caffeine had on my body, but also, two, people who it gave me a glimpse into the lives of people who are wrestling with addiction. Right. Like Caffeine is, is not the same as a lot of other addictions, but it gave me a glimpse and a little bit of understanding into people's lives, and I, I felt like I grew a lot from that experience. Sure. Uh, I've heard people give up social media. Yeah. Uh, and and. Wow, how tough would that be nowadays? I mean, now, well, and when we give something up, one of the best ways to do it is to give something up, and then you have to fill that gap. Right. And so you need to fill it with something that's healthy, or particularly something that directs your attention towards God. Right. So if you're fasting for lunch on Wednesdays during Lent, then use that time to pray, or read your Bible, or listen to music that directs you to God, or uh, listen to sermons or teachings, read a book. So that way you're not just thinking about how hungry you are, but you're thinking and about God and directing your attention that way. Um, back to the series. Can you give us a nugget or something that you're going to bring up uh, that uh, uh, in the subject matter that, that possibly we don't know? So uh, one of the things that I'm, I want to bring up is one of the weeks we're going to talk about uh, Judas's betrayal of Jesus. And and Judas gets this really bad rap. I mean, many ways, rightfully so. Um, but in Scripture, we don't actually see Jesus condemned, condemned Judas. Uh, and Judas dies by, um, either dies by suicide or accident, depending on the version, uh, the place in Scripture that you're reading. And so I'm going to encourage people to think about what would happen if Judas hadn't given up, even after he had done this awful thing, what would what could have happened in his life if he didn't give up? And so even when these awful things happen to us, maybe when we do awful things, what happens if we don't give up? Because the way that we think our story ends might be completely different than the way God thinks our story ends. And so I'm really looking forward to that, that Sunday in particular in this, this series. Cool. We'll be looking forward to it. Uh, anything else that you want to go over that uh, in this series that might uh, help us out? Yeah, yeah, I think it depends on kind of your background and how closely you are tied to this. Um, but there's some religious leaders that play this really big role 
and Jesus's death and and I'm more or less a religious leader in my life and so I take this as a warning to me because I think they fall into a trap that that is easy for religious leaders to fall into like what is easiest for me what helps me maintain my power instead of being sensitive to what God is doing and uh, so at one point in the Bible uh, one of the leaders says uh, it's better for one man to die than for all of the people of Israel to die, uh, which is really ironic in a, in a lot of ways. So we'll unpack sure. that too during sure. during the sure. series. Uh, and so the role that religious and civil authorities play in Jesus's death, um, and how there's so many people that could have stopped it but didn't. It sounds very exciting, and and uh, uh, obviously it's in, been in front of us our whole lives, but. Uh, a different perspective is always, I think, good for a season that that comes around once a year. You know, what I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's and I think it's great that you can come up with some uh, different ways to explain the events that happen. And it's got to be tough on any pastor. Okay, we're coming up on Easter. What do I talk about? We're coming up on Christmas. I yeah. talk, what do we talk about? Oh, wait, here's my sermon from last year. Maybe mm-hmm. I can just, you know. You can't what? Do that. And because Easter and Christmas are particularly tough for me, like Lent, you have three or four good options. And so you can, you know, if you're a pastor for 10 years, right. you can rotate through those options kind of on a slower schedule. <laughs> right. But right. Easter, the message is so much the same. And right. like one of your jobs as a pastor is to get out of the way so sure. people can hear God's message instead of yours. Sure. So Easter and Christmas are, are tougher times for sure. Okay. Closing comments. No, I think I want to invite everyone to check it out either online or in person and follow along. There'll also be a study guide that we put together. And so if you want to join a small group that's going to do one of those study guides, find one. Uh, You can email the church at office at asburycolumbus.org and we'll get you connected with people who are going through the same study and thinking about how all this applies to their lives. All right. Until next time, like I said, we're not sure where we're going with this, but we're we're going somewhere with it. Well, maybe, maybe we'll talk here in another couple of weeks and, and talk about uh, what's going on in the series and where we're at in the series and, and, and kind of go from there. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, Dean. Until next time. See you, everybody.